Welcome to CLMD Connect. In support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach. Integrating Technology Academic Community. The Household. Ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is DepEd Regional Office 11, delivering quality education across Davao region. Our week-long online training on literacy instruction is one of the many trainings that are coming our way to ensure that our teachers are capacitated, reskilled, and ready for the new school year. To open our afternoon session, let us first have our nationalistic song. Welcome to CLMD Connect. In support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach. Integrating Technology Academic Community. The Household. Ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is DepEd Regional Office 11, delivering quality education across Davao Region. Good afternoon to all our viewers who are watching us live from the different corners of Region 11. Earlier this morning, we have witnessed Dr. Narimila Espedido 
who introduced the eighth session entitled Hunting for the Nitty Gritty, Noting Significant Details and Textual Evidences Through Close Reading. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Espedida. Good afternoon, Ms. Ava. Good afternoon, Ms. March. That's precisely correct. And we are now in our third day breakaway sessions, 9, 10, and 11, respectively. With our uplifting presentations of our remaining three speakers this afternoon, the Curriculum and Learning Management Division is keen to address on this critical times of COVID-19 pandemic as we continue our advocacy anchored on Sulung Ido Calidad. Respected. Regional Director of Region 11, Dr. Evelyn Arvith Alvero, CESO 4. Our Assistant Regional Director, Dr. Maria Inesi Asuncion, CESO 5. Our Chief of the Curriculum and Learning Management Division, Chief Janet G. Veloso. Education Program Supervisor, English Learning Area, Dr. Manuel P. Vallejo. Dr. Maricel Langahid. And of course, Dr. Jessalyn De La Cuesta, the Education Program Supervisors, Region 11. Our Region 11 Education Program Supervisor Supervisors, together with the Division Education Program Supervisors, our dearest school teachers and school heads, good afternoon. We will not forget our attendance, and it's going to be in the screen right now. Do not forget to signify your attendance as it's important, equally important for your certificate of participation. Back to you, Ms. Marge. Yes, and once again, we would like to remind our participants to please fill in all the details most especially your names. Please complete your name, put your surname and your first name as well as your middle name if it's asked, okay? So for our evaluation uh, this afternoon, it will be posted later and you can answer it right after the last session, okay? And I would like also to say, uh, Miss Ava, that the link for the task of our facilitators will be posted during the video or their presentation and it will be shown as a scrolling text below their screen and of course in addition to that we have to forget that in everything attendance is a must and of course certificate of participation is always at most important at the end of this webinar and of course, the deeper awareness of our school teachers there, they can have the more expanded, innovative solutions of their questions and concerns. That is a little later after the third speaker that they can have the open forum or the question and answer portion. Right, Marge? Yes, you may send in your questions and comments through our Padlet link. May we request our controller to please post our Padlet link? Okay, so the Padlet link is posted below. Thank you so much, by the way, to our controller, Mr. Pochola Hernandez, and of course, Ma'am Casey of Bernardo Carpe National High School. Marami, marami, salamat po. Though you cannot see them on screen, but they are actually doing their best to assist us and to make this um, live stream successful. All right, Miss Ava, I think it's time to introduce our next speaker. Of course, we are now in the most awaited part, which is the breakaway session nine on our significant contribution in the field of the academe. Ladies and gentlemen, our resource facilitator on her topic, what feeling lies within? Inferring general mood and tone of the selection, ladies and gentlemen, an education program supervisor of the Division of Panabo City, Madam Maria Angelita Perpetua G. Suelto. Welcome to CLMD Connect. In support, In support to the support comprehensive, to the comprehensive region, region Learning, Learning Continuity, continuity Plan LCP. LCP. I teach, I teach. Integrating, integrating Technology, technology academic, academic, academic Community, community the, household. the Household, Ensuring, ensuring every, every Learner is safe and protected anytime, anytime anywhere. anywhere. Anchored on Sulang Ido Kalida. This is Depth this is Ed Regional, Ed Regional Office, Office 11, 11. Delivering, quality delivering Quality Education Across Davao Region. Davao region. Good morning, Region 11. We are now on Day 3, Session 9 of this five-day regional training on literacy instruction. I am Maria Perpetua Angelita G. Suelto, Education Program Supervisor, in charge of English from Panabo City Division. I will be facilitating our topic for today entitled, 
What feeling Welcome lies to within? CLMD Connect in support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach. Integrating technology academic community, the household. Ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is Dep Ed Regional Office 11, delivering quality education across Davao region. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, this is our breakaway session nine on our significant contribution in the field of the academe. Ladies and gentlemen, our resource facilitator on her topic, What Feeling Lies Within? Inferring general mood and tone of the selection, made of Maria Angelita Perpetua G. Suelto, an education program supervisor from the division of Panabo City. Welcome oh. to CLMD Connect, in support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach, integrating technology academic community, the household, ensuring every, every learner, learner is, safe, learner and is safe and protected anytime, protected anywhere. anytime anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is Dep Ed this Regional Dep Office Ed 11, Office delivering 11. quality delivering education quality across Davao region. Devo region. Good morning, Region 11. We are now on Day 3, Session 9 of this five-day regional training on literacy instruction. I am Maria Perpetua Angelita G. Suelto, Education Program Supervisor, in charge of English from Panabo City Division. I will be facilitating our topic for today entitled, What Feeling Lies Within? Discovering Tone and Mood which was prepared and delivered by Anna Marie Vili-Tonwa, Senior Education Program Specialist, Bureau of Learning Delivery, Department of Education, Central Office. These are our session goals. Recognize the differences between tone and mood and how these two elements contribute to the overall message and impact of the story to the audience. Use appropriate and relevant strategies in teaching tone and mood and formulate appropriate grade level questions for the discussion and assessment of the mood and tone of a particular selection. We have prepared three activities for you in this session. Our first activity is agree or disagree. I will be showing you statements. In the chat box, type agree or disagree, or you can use the reaction button. If agree, use thumbs up. If disagree, no reaction. Are you ready? For statement number one, one way of understanding the tone of the selection is through character analysis. One way of understanding the tone of the selection is through character analysis. Statement number two. Most texts explicitly suggest the mood of a story. Most texts explicitly suggest the mood of a story. Statement number three. In a story, a reader may identify both positive and negative tones. In a story, a reader may identify both positive and negative tones. Number four. Though mood is language dependent on writer's word choice, 
it remains audience oriented. Though mood is language dependent on writer's word choice, it remains audience oriented. Last statement. Tone is uniform and invariable over the course of character development. Tone is uniform and invariable over the course of character development. Let us now watch a video lecture about tone and mood. So today's session, What Feeling Lies Within, Discovering Mood and Tone. And I'm pretty sure you're very familiar with these two concepts. Okay? But then, let's admit it. There are times when teachers or even, well, most likely learners, they get confused. They tend to mix up these two concepts. So the challenge for this, for this session is to have a solid understanding and let's see which strategies can be used in teaching tone and mood. So here are the session goals. First is to recognize the differences between the two and how, how tone and mood contribute to the overall impact of the story. Then let's see the different strategies. But again, disclaimer, I'm not imposing that these are the only strategies that we can use. Definitely, we have a lot of strategies that we can use in teaching tone and mood. But let's just focus on some. And hopefully, at the end of this session, we can formulate questions when we discuss and assess tone and mood. Let's begin with what tone is. Remember what, how, and why. So basically, when you say tone, it refers to the emotional quality of the text. Okay, so I'm using an analogy, like a speech. Just like right now, I'm the speaker, the audience. In writing, you have the author and the reader. Now, when you hear the speaker's voice, it can convey a wide range of feelings, right? So can writer's voice. Although, in reality, it is easier to detect verbal tone than written tone. Let me give you an example. Common misunderstanding of couple or friends happens between text message, right? So you send a text message, and then, for example, my partner, he would think I was scolding him. But then when I explain it to him verbally, he would understand that I wasn't scolding. I was just explaining my side. So verbal tone is easier to understand compared to written tone. That's why when we study tone, we must examine the context. We must make an inference. Now, the common definition of tone is that it is the author's attitude towards what? The event, the plot, the audience, the subject, or the character. Now, let's have an example. Imagine you are reading a story, okay? And then the author described this place. What can you say about the place? So, one of the lines in the story says like this. This place may be shabby, but since both of my children were born while we live here, it has a special place in my heart. So what do you think is the attitude of the author when he wrote this line? Sentimental, thank you very much, right? Because of the phrase, a special place in my heart. Even though it looks shabby, clutter, messy, but then it expresses tender and gentle emotion, okay? But let's say same description, same setting, same story, but one of the lines goes like this. If only there were some decent jobs out there, I wouldn't be reduced to living in this miserable dump. So what is the tone? Why bitter? Because the character or the narrator resents the situation that he's into, that forces him to live in such a miserable dump. What about this one? Same setting, same description. This is the apartment we live in. It provides shelter. 
But I guess the, the closest answer would be objective. Your answers are possible if we will examine the whole story, of course. Because I don't see any trace of emotion here. And it is very straightforward, right? Very factual. This is the apartment I live in. It provides shelter. That's it. Okay? So now, we know what tone is. But then, the question of the learners, teacher, how can we detect the tone? Where's the tone in the story? Because we cannot hear that the characters are actually talking to us. Okay? So we have to teach them how is tone conveyed in literature. Okay? And of course, based on the example, you see three pictures. So there's a possibility that we encounter positive, negative, and neutral tone. But most of the time, it's positive and negative tone. So what makes up a tone? Of course, we have to understand the point of view, which is one of the elements in a short story. Diction, author's word choice. Level of formality. So we look into the character's relationship, the dynamics. Let's say, what is the tone between your superior and the subordinate? What's the tone? Authoritative, okay? <laughs> very formal, very serious. But then between friends and lovers, what's the tone? Casual, very open, okay? So we look at the level of formality, the dynamics of the relationship. Of course, dialogue. Actually, this is the source in which we can really understand, examine the tone of the text and syntax, which is the arrangement of words. Now, all of these, as a teacher, I must check first. Do my learners have prior knowledge on these concepts? Why? It would be difficult for our students to understand the tone if they don't know these concepts. So I would say these are considered prerequisite knowledge. So before discussing tone, let's check, let's see, let's assess. Do our students understand what point of view is, what's addiction, etc. Okay? Now, next question. Teacher, why do you have to understand the tone? What is it for? Right? Why can't I just go straight to the story, what, who, when, where, and the message? That's it. But then why is there a tone in the story? So the first, can you guess? Let's see, visual learners. What's the use of tone in the story? It bridges the gap. Okay, that's right. So close to that, reader's connection. It deepens reader's connection. For example, a story that is light on tone markers or let's say mix-up, there's a tendency that the readers will get confused. So we should be clear in articulating the tone. Next, what about this one? Can you guess what's the use of tone? You see different facial expressions of the same person? Okay. Character development. Tone can change over the course of the story. And this is very evident as the character starts to grow or change, particularly the dynamic or the round characters when events start to shake up, like during the rising action or probably the climax. Okay? So we understand character development through tone also. Next, this is a wordle of a woman. It says attentive, affectionate, determined, all adjectives about a woman. Can you guess? It's related to character also. Traits. Thank you, sir. So through tone, it can reveal character's personality. Okay? And of course, just like in comics, it will give us some cue on the different scenes in the story, because we see the changes, the plot development, as we examine the tone. To deepen our understanding about tone, let us have activity number two, identifying tone. I need participants to read the given dialogues. Now, identify the tone based on how the speaker delivered the line. Again, type your answers in the chat box. Speaker number one. Oh, my poor little 
dog bunning Ning is home! Shrieked Mrs. Reyes. It's all my fault. I forgot to close the gate this morning. I feel so guilty about this. I couldn't have been so stupid. I can never forgive myself. What kind of dog mommy am I? Thank you, first speaker. What do you think is the tone? Hmm, I can see guilty, worried, and easy. The answer is, starts with letter R. Got it right. Remorseful or filled with remorse or sorry. Regretful or apologetic. Let us have speaker number two. Little sweet paningning means so much to me. I remember when we got her as a puppy at the pet store. She came right up and gave each other one of us a leak. She was the tiniest little thing and so loving. Paningning personally picked us out to be her owners. What is the tone of the given line? Pensive, joyful, compassionate. Starts with letter S. Yes, did you write sentimental? Yes, that's it. Thinking about feelings, especially when remembering the past. Speaker number three. This is so sad. Without her here, I feel like it's a big dark cloud sitting on my head. I can't go into work today. I'm just going to sit here and wait till I hear something. What is the tone of the third dialogue? What is your guess? Yes, yeah, starts with letter D and it's depressed, sad, melancholic. What's statement number four? Maybe somebody will see my posters about the reward for her return. She couldn't have wandered very far. After all, she's been only gone for a short while. Anyway, I'll bet she can find him own way back home. We take her a long walk every evening. I know she's coming back to me. I'm sure she'll be back soon. In this dialogue, the tone is positive or appreciative. Starts with letter O. Yes, optimistic, hopeful, or cheerful. Let us proceed to the fifth speaker. Oh my goodness, Paning Ning! Is that really you? What are you doing here? Where have you been? Oh my goodness. What is this dawn in this time? Starts with letter S. Surprised! You're right, surprised. Here's now the next dialogue. Have you been here inside the house all this time? Hmm, how could that happen? I thought you were gone. Did you go away and then come back? What's going on here? Is somebody playing a trick on me? Have you been here inside the house all this time? How could it happen? The tone is, starts with letter C, confused or bewildered. That's it. Let's move on to the next dialogue. Come here, my little sweet doggy. Your mommy is glad to see you. Oh, small little precious. Her sweet funny name. Mommy can a goodie for you. Gentle, kind, pathetic. Starts with the letter L. Loving or affectionate. Yes, that's right. 
And this is the eighth dialogue. Louise, you really need to be a lot more careful. You need to pay more attention to what you're doing. You could have lost money forever just because you didn't take enough time to check the gates. Yes, critical or disapproving or criticizing. Get it right. Ninth speaker, please. Young man, here's a thousand for you. I'm sure you have nothing better to do today. Go around the neighborhood and remove all the reward posters. I expect you back here promptly in 10 minutes. Gotta move on. Starts with letter A. Did you type arrogant? Yes, it is. Or pompous and overbearing. Arrogant. That's for number nine. Number 10, the last but not the least. <laughs> that young boy will probably mess it up. If you want something done it right, you have to do it yourself. I'll probably spend the rest of the day receiving phone calls and asking about the reward. And people are going to be bringing small dogs to my door and asking me if it's spending me. What a lousy day this is going to turn out to be. Seeing the negative side or pessimistic. That's correct. Pessimistic. Now, what do you notice of the tone? Did each speaker have the same tone? There are the different tones expressed by the same speaker. Why is this possible? What do these changes in the tone tell us about it? What is the key takeaway that our learners must understand about the tone? Let us watch the video lecture once again. What did you notice about the tone? It changes, right? But the same character okay, as the story progresses. So there's this concept of tone shift and split tone. Good authors rarely use only one tone in their writings. Complex attitudes might include a changing attitude, just like what happened to the owner of Paningning, or tone shift, or one attitude toward the reader and another attitude toward the subject, split tone. Okay. So now let's move on to the next concept. This time, it's about the mood. If tone is the author's attitude, mood is the general atmosphere, the ambience, what's the vibe that you get. Just like the moment you step here in this place, what's the ambience, what's the atmosphere? Do you like this place? Yes, okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you like your office? Yes, right? Okay, positive mood, right? Okay. So in story, when you say mood, it refers to the prevailing feeling or frame of mind that is usually developed at the beginning of the story. This is evident in the setting of the story, which creates somehow a sense of expectation of what is about to happen. Okay, so... Let me show you an example, but this one in a viewing context. You're familiar with the movie Frozen? Let it go, let it go. Okay, so what's the mood of Frozen? What's the feeling that you get after watching the movie? What's the vibe? <laughs> Happy, right? Okay, excited. But let me show you an edited version of Frozen. We'll be fine, Elsa. The gloves will help. Can see it. No. Elsa, this is getting out of hand. Oh, she's ice cold. She can learn to control it, I'm sure. So then, lock the gate. Hey, enough! Ah! Oh, Elsa! What have you done? It was an accident. <sighs> Where do I get the reward for news of the queen? Hey, just tell me one thing. Who 
what was happening on the North Mountain? Did it seem magical? Yes. Take me up the North Mountain. Oh, you have to go. No, I'm not leaving without Sam touching me. Your life is in danger. There is ice in your heart put there by your sister. All that's left now is to kill Elsa and bring back Sam. When are you going to lighten up and have a heart? So you can compare and contrast the original trailer from the edited trailer. And you see that the difference in the sound, the lightning, and even the angle or the perspective where you show the story, it creates a different impact. Just like in mood. Maybe what you are reading, you feel this way, but another person might feel a different um, feeling about the text. Because again, coming from different background, right? So now, same question, just like tone. How is mood conveyed? First, we can understand the mood through the setting, okay? It is the where and the when of the story takes place, right? Because setting is usually the start of the story, and it creates the mood. Like, for example, if you hear the phrase, on a dark, stormy night, what's the mood? Gloomy, probably potentially threatening. But if you see, ominous, thank you, ma'am. But if you see... Or if you read the word, once upon a time in a cotton candy kingdom. Cotton candy. Yummy. <laughs> Whimsical, lighthearted. Okay? So setting is important when we teach the mood. This one, diction. Okay? A word in literal sense may mean the same, but it can evoke different connotations. Like, for example, let's use a basic word, Rain. Rain is a form of precipitation. That's the literal sense. But then rain for you could remind of sad memory, sadness. But rain for you could remind something, happy memories, positive, blessing. Okay, so diction, connotation is also important when we discuss the mood. And imagery, tapping all the senses. Okay? Not all images in the story would reflect the mood. But those images that are repeated can indicate the mood of the story. So, for example, the mood is, or the poem has these words like, um, herd of sheep, brooks, um, what else? Trees. Probably the feeling is like idyllic, you know, relaxed. But then, let's say the mood is lights out, we're sweating. <laughs> so what's the mood? <laughs> okay, possibly you're tired. Or probably let's say candlelight, sweet music, chocolate. What's the mood? Romantic. I like romantic mood. <laughs> anyway, so everything, all of these are prerequisite knowledge. Okay. It's, it's harder for students to understand mood if they don't have concept of what setting is, what's connotation, and imagery. Okay? So when do we use or why do we need to understand the mood? Just like in tone, the mood helps the writers to take the readers like us in a journey. And what kind of journey is that? Not just to stimulate our minds, but in an emotional journey. Okay, so that we can be responsive, we can be engaged in the text. So emotional response. Next, mood will help us to understand the several subplots. Okay, the changes. It gives us like a cue from one scene to the next scene. Mood can also help us understand the theme or the universal truth of the story. Like, for example, if the theme is about death, tragedy, let's say Hamlet or Macbeth, probably the mood would be what's the mood? Yes, that's the mood. <laughs> Mournful, gloomy, okay? And then, understanding mood will also help us sustain engagement 
right? If we like the story, if we're hooked in the story, it lets us continue reading. But then if we don't like the mood that is being developed or that we feel about the story, we stop reading. So it helps us sustain our engagement in reading. For our last activity entitled Emotional Space, please get your camera and take a selfie capturing your facial expressions. Okay, get your camera now. Take a selfie. Please send that to your respective division or school group chats. Yes. Thank you so much. There you have it. Okay. So, what is your mood or how do you feel in our webinar today? In the next part of the video lecture, you will learn or relearn about reading strategies in teaching tone and mood. The strategies covered here are not the only ones that may work. For the purpose of this limited session, three main strategies can be used. Visualization, making inference, and art of questioning. If you are caught up in this traffic, how would you feel? What is the emotion evoked in this picture? Patience, happy, sad. How about in this picture? Yes, they are angry. They are angry. How about in this picture? Mm, happy and ready. So when I say tone, is the author's attitude. The way feelings are expressed, it reveals the author's intention. While the mood, the emotion, the author wants the readers to feel about the story's environment or the text's atmosphere. What the author feels about the subject is often defined as the tone, and what the reader feels is known as the mood. Now, let us go back to the conceptual understanding in our first activity. Please get your paper and let us check your answers for our conceptual understanding. Number one, agree or disagree. One way of understanding the tone of the selection is through character analysis. One way of understanding the tone of the selection is through character analysis. Agree or disagree. Agree. We can identify both by looking at the setting, characters, details, and word choices. By doing so, it will help us find meaning in the story or passage and help us feel more connected to the writing. Number two, most texts explicitly suggest the mood of a story. Most texts explicitly suggest the mood of a story. Agree or disagree? Agree, most texts, not all texts, explicitly suggest the mood of a story. Something that is explicit is stated directly. It is clear in meaning. Explicit meaning is the easiest to pick out from a text. Sometimes a writer wants it to be obvious that the atmosphere of the text is good, bad, dangerous, happy, sad, and so on. Something that is implicit is inferred. It is suggested by the way it is said. Implicit meaning can be harder to figure out than explicit meaning, but we need to read between the lines. Number three. In a story, as the reader may identify both positive and negative tones. In a story, a reader may identify both positive and negative tones. Agree or disagree? Agree. When it comes to tone, you have three choices. Positive, negative, or neutral. Positive tone is always your best choice. Negative tones tend to make the reader feel angry and defensive. And if you're a writer, it may damage your professional image. 
Statement number four. Though wood is language dependent on writer's word choice, it remains audience oriented. Though wood is language dependent on, on writer's word choice, it remains audience oriented. Agree or disagree? Agree. As we all know, reading is a psycholinguistic guessing game, which the reader picks up graphic cues to words, forms a perceptual image, and thus reads the selection process. Using our prior knowledge plus the text evidence, we can interact with a reading text. Number five, tone is uniform and invariable over the course of character development. Tone is uniform and invariable over the course of character development. Agree or disagree? Disagree. A dynamic character is a character who undergoes significant internal change throughout the course of a story. The development of a dynamic character is often subtle and unstated and is not due to a change in the character circumstance or circumstances. Static character does not literally change over the course of a story, sometimes known as the flat character. And these characters often play tertiary roles in a narrative. Let us now watch the video once again. So I guess we're done with the first part. Now let's move on to the second part. Now let's discuss the strategies. So what strategies are we going to use in teaching tone and mood? In this illustration, I'd like you to see that there's this hierarchy of strategies the lower order up to the higher order strategies okay and then we'll try to touch a bit of each so we'll focus on creating images inferring and questioning okay remember good readers use comprehension strategies in understanding the text and so we must explicitly teach them these strategies and when we say explicit teaching, you know this model already. We start from direct instruction, modeling, guided, and independent. Now, I found this a more complicated, complex diagram of gradual release of responsibility. So as you can see, the diagonal line, teacher's responsibility, gradually releasing it to the learner. But in the middle, there's the shared responsibility. So I am going to focus on three, visualization, making inference, questioning, okay? In teaching, tone, and mood. But again, I'm not saying that these are the only strategies that can work, okay? So what do we mean by visualization? The ability to create a mental image representative of the text. That when you read, I can see it in my mind. I can imagine it. And it is a metacognitive reading strategy. Okay? In fact, it is the fifth strategy along with the popular strategies like prediction, questioning, clarification, and summarization. Presley is a famous researcher in comprehension strategies. Okay? Another terms for visualization, sensory imagery. When we ask our learners to visualize, it's easier for them to recall the text. Like for example, if I'm reading a book, let's say 10 chapters, okay, how can I track or monitor my understanding if I won't be able to visualize it? Let's say I'm on the 10th chapter, the last chapter. Do I need to reread the first to ninth chapter? Of course not. So visualization is critical, okay? We have... We can um, use this to help us in recalling, remembering the details. It is also called the brain movies or the movie of the mind. It has something to do with brain-based teaching also. You know, athletes, one of the methods of trainers is visualization. Kung sports coach ako, sasabihin ko sa team ko, okay, try to form an image. What do you want to be? A winner. How are you going to win that? A strong image because it works it's really a powerful tool so now we can start forming in our mind how to be a billionaire okay so brain movies like when we read the book 
Di ba? For example, I read Hunger Games. So I was so engrossed in that book. And then when I saw the movie, it's either you are disappointed or you're satisfied. Is the image that I was able to create when I was reading it the same the image that I saw in the movie? But of course, we have to understand there are limitations in movie. And it is also called in technical term gestalt imagery or in psychology. Gestalt means an organized unit or whole. Okay? So the only way for us to have a gestalt imagery or a complete picture is through visualization. So we're talking about complete the totality of the picture. We're not just after the bits, the pieces or of information, but we want to see the big picture. And there's this line from a Nobel a uh, famous scientist, it says, everyone, who can guess who said this famous line? Thank you, sir. Okay. Albert Einstein, the power of imagination. Okay. So it's very important. And one way to do that is through visualization. So how do we do visualization? Of course, very basic. Then let's just recap. Everything starts from reading. Could be read aloud, especially for young learners. Could guided, silent, etc. Later, we will do that. And this step, I think this is the step that we miss. We assume that our learners will just automatically visualize, right? But without telling them, okay, class, as I read, as we read, try to imagine. What do you see, feel, taste, smell, and hear as we read the words in the story? So we have to verbally tell that to our students that you have to imagine the story. Or else they will space out, magiging lutang, kung ano-ano nang na-imagine, right? So we have to redirect their attention. But then, do we just stop there? Let's say if I, okay, class, we're going to read the story. Try to imagine. Then after that, I'll just proceed with my discussion. No. The next step is that we have to verbalize it. Meaning, give time for your learners to think, to imagine. And then let them express that. We cannot skip that part, okay? So how do they do that? Through words, like discussion with their partner in the class, or, of course, if you have plenty of time, depends on the teacher's um, decision, you can ask them to sketch or draw. And that's the time that we go for asking questions. That's why I chose this visualization, making inference, questioning, leading to the tone and mood. Okay, we'll see later. Now, making inference, you know this? Recap again. It's based on the idea that reading is a psycholinguistic guessing game. Okay? It is about the interaction of the thought and the language. And because it's a guessing game, we want to read between the lines. There are some information that are not directly stated. So we have to figure out using this formula. Text evidence plus prior knowledge. But then there's a caution. If let's say I will define, okay class, making inference is like this. Then probably it remains vague to our students. The word infer, ma teacher, what is infer? Okay. So we cannot simply tell them to make an inference. Instead, if we can be more specific by naming types of inference, we can easily model. So again, modeling of how to make an inference. Let's have this. I just chose some types in relation to tone and mood. Skilled readers make different types of inference. First, you make inference by looking at the antecedent of the pronoun. And so the teacher should say, look for pronouns and figure out what to connect them. So you understand the characters. Next, Making inference is also when we figure out unknown words. So as a teacher, I should tell this to my student. Okay, class, 
look for unknown words and see if any other words in the sentence or surrounding sentences give you an idea of what those unknown words mean. Another type of making inference is understanding intonation of characters' words. So this is related to tone. Okay? Read this section and see if you can explain why the character acted this way. Next, identifying characters' beliefs, personality, and motivation. So the teacher should tell this directly. You should guide the students. That this is how you do this. This is how you make an inference. As you read the section, look for clues that would tell you how the author might feel about the topic. So now we're talking about the tone. And another type of inference is providing details about the setting. Think about the setting. What other details can you add? Why do you say so? Okay. So from visualizing to making inference, let's move now to questioning. So I use this illustration because sometimes... When we discuss literature, probably we're just focused on the lower order. I'm not saying that noting details is not good. Of course, that's preliminary. That's basic. But then we have to go higher for that, the higher order thinking skills. So we cannot just spoon feed or throw questions more of the, of the what, who, when, where. Okay? But we want our students to develop inferential understanding. Okay? Because the, the kind of questions that we ask shape their thinking. Kung nasanay si bata na puro what, who, when, where, then every time they will read, yun na lang yung iisipin nila. When in fact, there are other questions that we can ask to deepen their understanding. So let's just recap the different types of questions that we ask in the classroom. So we have the conversion question, which is a close question. For example, if I'm asking about the mood, what is the emotional effect that the excerpt creates for the readers? Or you have the divergent question, which is an open-ended question. Why do you think the attitude of the old man is like this? Do you remember these two questions? These were part of the pretest. Okay? And then other types of questions like probing. So you have to recast or reconstruct your questions to further elucidate and get clarification. Reflective questions to consider their thinking. How did you come up with that idea? Why do you say so? So justifying, verifying is that asking for an evidence and redirecting. So these are some potential sentence starters. So we can give this to our students. So you ask questions and then later on you train them to ask their own question, self-questioning. And so combining these three, it's easier for us to teach tone and mood. Because in the typical classroom, probably we just define, okay class, this is the mood, this is the tone, these are the list of adjectives, what is the tone, what is the mood, that's it. Okay? Okay. But then, using visualization, inference, questioning, students will have a solid understanding of what tone and mood are. Let us continue with activity number three. Let us guess the theme of the story by answering the following questions. I get chopped, decorated, and on one end, you see wings on top. What am I? Christmas tree. If Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus had a child, what would he be called? Subordinate Claus. What do you have in December that you don't have in any other month? Letter D. The three stages of man. First, he believes in Santa Claus. Second, he doesn't believe in Santa Claus. What is the third? Third states, he is Santa Claus. What did Adam say the day before Christmas? It's Christmas Eve. Knock, knock, who's there? Mary. Mary who? Merry Christmas. And so, 
The theme of our story is Christmas. It's entitled A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. We will now have a guided reading and chunking of text. The story is divided into four portions. Each portion has a set of defined reading strategies pertaining to visualization, making inferences, and questioning. As I read aloud the first portion of the story, answer what do you see? What do you notice? What do you wonder? What do you think or what do you feel about the passage? You may answer this using this visualization prompts. This is the first strategy in, or the first technique in this first part of the story. Once upon a time on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his office. It was very cold outside, and in Scrooge's office, it was not much warmer either. Suddenly, Scrooge's nephew entered the office. A Merry Christmas, Uncle! God save you! Fred said. Huh, said Scrooge. Humbug! Christmas a humbug, Uncle, said Scrooge's nephew. He don't mean that, I am sure. I do, said Scrooge. What's Christmas to you? You have to pay bills without money. You're your older, but not an hour richer. Keep Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine. Do you have the same answer with me? Let us see. I see that it's Christmas time. I expect everyone is looking forward to it, but it's different for Scrooge. I notice that Scrooge isn't happy about Christmas. I feel the weather's cold, just like the office of Scrooge. Wasn't warm that much either. I hear an old man Scrooge talking to his nephew. I wonder how's their relationship. Or we could also use this multiple or structured multiple choice question. What is the attitude expressed in the statement that Scrooge said? What's Christmas time to you? You have to pay bills without money. You are you older but not an hour richer. Keep Christmas in your way and let me keep it in your mind. And let me keep it in mind. Whining, scolding, critical, or alarm. Or you could also ask the following questions. What does the author think about Scrooge's nephew? How does Ben think about Christmas? Does he have the same attitude with his uncle Scrooge? In the first portion of the paragraph or the story, we use the following techniques. Read aloud. Reading aloud to children builds and supports their listening and speaking abilities and enhances their overall language development. Another one is teacher think aloud, described as eavesdropping on someone's thinking. And the third one is cold call, the act of calling just on students to answer questions at random. Remember that do not ask the same type of questions that sounds predictable and cliche. What is the tone, what is the tone, what is the mood? Teacher must learn how to formulate different questions leading to tone and mood. Let's proceed to the second portion of the story. As I read aloud, close your eyes, then answer the sense chart. This is another example of visualization technique. Listen to the story. Scrooge lived all alone in an old house. The yard was very dark and scary that night, and when Scrooge wanted to unlock the door, he had the feeling that he saw the ghost of his business partner Marley, who died a long time ago there. This was rather spooky, but Scrooge was not frightened easily. Humbug, he said, opened the door and walked in. He locked himself in, however, which he usually didn't do. Make a sketch of Marley using your senses, your eyes, hands, your ears, your nose, and your tongue. 
Let us see if we have the same answer. And we have the same image of Marley. I see an old creepy house where Scrooge lives. I see the ghost of Marley who is approaching near Scrooge. He is chained with money, keys, and purses. It feels cold and creepy. I hear the clunking of chains in a deep voice. I smell burnt wood and moldy furnacing. Though no mention of food, but I sense a vile creature filled with remorse. Do you have the same image with Marty? Yes, that's Marty. Another one is still a questioning strategy. What is the feeling that the author wants his readers to experience? A. Dreary. Be gloomy, see frightening, or be lonely. Which words in the text indicate that the mood of the passage is? So that's the second portion. Now let's proceed to the next portion of the story. We will be using in this portion of the story the text evidence through annotation. The text evidence through annotation will help learners make inferences on, on the tone and mood of the passage. Again, the text evidence through annotation will be able to help the learners make an inference on the tone and mood of the passage. The words alone, lonely, dark and scary, night, ghost, died, and spooky. These are text evidence through annotation, and it denotes what, the, what is the tone or the mood of the story. So in this portion of the story, we use the following techniques, such as topedia, or so the suggestion of psychological barriers, a positive suggestion, Lessons take place against a background of music in an emotionally comforting environment. We also have cognitive organizer, the visual tools that assist learners to represent facts, ideas, concepts, and the connections between them. And the third one is text evidence, citing word and looking for clues from the text to justify and explain the mood and the tone. This time, we will have silent reading. As we read silently, you do visualize teaching through drawing, oral text, drawing what the character saw. Or you could also draw, how does this make you feel? Or draw, what, you, what should the character do? So that's silent reading. Then another one is text snapshot. You write different words into the camera from the text that shows sensory language. Below the camera, draw a picture that you visualize from the text. So in many ways, hashtag drawing is the connection between the eye, heart, and mind. No, uh, we can also use, so in this selection, we use the three techniques silent reading, or the sketch to sketch, and the discussion groups. These are techniques in reading, or inferring tone and mood. In this portion, we can also ask questions in the middle of the paragraph to guide the students. It's like that, what I'm picturing, what I can imagine, or you can use structure words, or you can ask questions. So in this portion, we use the whole class reading, visualization through structure words and inference. Another one is, after reading the story, we can also have visualization and questioning. You may ask, what do I see as I read? Then you will draw 
what you have your response to the story. Remember not to worry about artistic quality, just sketch how you picture out the character. And you can ask questions also. What is the mood described when the third spirit appeared? And the children said, Don't mind it, Father, don't be sad. So visualization, then you draw, then you ask questions. Study the assigned visual text. Utilize various reading strategies and create a series of discussion questions that will guide learners in discovering the mood and tone of the story. Write a short note explaining on how the series of questions will lead your class in understanding the mood and tone of the story. During the presentation, demonstrate how visualization and questioning can be done to teach and move. These are the sample texts for grade 4, Raquel's Fantastic Hair, grade 5, A Dozen Pair of Shoes, grade 6, The Happy Prince, grade 7, My Father Goes to Court, grade 8, Witch, grade 9, Birthday Party, and grade 10, Excerpt from 1984. So this will be your output, another output for this session. This is an individual output. and. You submit your work through the link that will be given to you. So we have here sample questions from the given text. To close this session, we have the PMI chart. P for plus, M for minus, and I for insights. In the plus, what are the ideas you have learned, relearned, and unlearned? Minus, what are the difficulties or challenges do you anticipate in teaching tone and mood? And for the insights, what are your insights in today's session? So you add also the best practices or the, cha the challenges the challenges that you encounter in teaching tone and mood and include also the best practices. So that will be your output for this session. The PMI chart and the challenges that you encountered and the best practices in teaching tone and mood now let us have this self-assessment answer this honestly i can discriminate mood and tone as two distinct elements of a story i'm confident i'm not sure i barely understood it i understand the tone and mood shape the meaning of the text Confident, I'm not sure I barely understood it. I can formulate appropriate questions in discussing mood and tone. Are you confident? Are you are you sure or not sure? Or you barely understood it? And the last but not the least, I can explicitly teach reading strategies to help my learners understand mood and tone. Before we shall finally close the session, let's again watch the video for the third time. Discovering the Tone and Mood by Anna Marlene Litunha. So let's begin. So what are the possible challenges? One is vocabulary, right? Because there are lots of tone and mood words. So one way is to design activities that will enrich students' vocabulary, one at a time. So again, scaffolding, applying visualization strategy, Sometimes we, we assume that students know it already or doing it without telling them. So again, let's be explicit and constant practice so that it will become a habit. And the questions leading to tone and mood, we cannot just stick to what is the tone and mood. There are other ways to discover the tone and mood of the question. So tone and mood are often mixed up, but if tone is the author's attitude, mood is how you are made to feel as readers. And this is what visualization is. Teaching reading strategies together rather than isolation is important because students must learn how to use reading strategies in a flexible, resourceful manner rather than using a strategy simply because they were instructed to do so. So again, thank you very much, Paul. So from this session, what feelings lies within identifying tone and mood? These are the key understanding. Tone refers to the author's attitude toward the event, audience, subject, or character. 
It is like a speech that conveys a wide range of feeling. Tone can be conveyed through point of view, diction, syntax, and connotation. Good authors rarely use only one tone in their writings. Complex attitudes may include a changing attitude or tone shift, or one attitude toward the reader and another attitude toward the subject or split tone. Mood refers to the prevailing feeling or frame of mind. Mood can be conveyed through setting, diction, and imagery. Tone and mood can be expressed either positive or negative. Visualization is the ability to create a mental image representative of the text. It is a metacognitive reading strategy. And the fifth strategy, along with prediction, questioning, clarification, and summarization. Visualization is also called sensory imagery, brain movies, and gestural imagery. When one makes an inference, it is based on the belief that reading is like a psychological guessing game. There are different types of making inference. A, recognize the antecedents for pronouns. B, figure out unknown words from context news. C, understand intonation of characters' words. D, identify characters' beliefs, personalities, and motivations. And E, provide details about the setting. In formulating questions, if students receive a steady diet of factual detailed questions, they tend in future encounters with text to focus their efforts on factual details. If, by contrast, more general or more inferential understanding is desired, teachers should emphasize questions that provide a purpose. Reading aloud to children builds and supports their listening and speaking abilities and enhances their overall language development. Think aloud is described as eavesdropping on someone's thinking. Cold call is the act of calling on students to answer questions at random. Tone and mood are often mixed up. If tone is the author's attitude toward a subject, then mood is how you are made to feel as readers. Teaching reading strategies together rather than in isolation is important because students must learn how to use reading strategies in a flexible, resourceful manner rather than using a strategy simply because they were instructed to do so. That was session nine, What Feeling Lies Within, Discovering Mood and Tone. This is Angelita G. Suelto, your facilitator, saying, a person who understands your mood with the tone of your talk is the best person to share your emotions. Happy working, everyone. Good day. Welcome to CLMB Welcome Connect. To CLMB in Connect. support to the in Comprehensive Region-Led region Learning region continuity, continuity Plan, plan LCP. Plan, LCP. I teach. I teach. Integrating technology, Integrating academic, technology community, academic community, the household. Ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is DepEd Regional Office 11, delivering quality education across Davao region. Wow, there you go. Very interesting on the topic. Where's Paning Ning? How's your attitude towards the subject or your attitude towards our new normal education? What's your mood this afternoon on this very hour of the day? Or the mood to our training on literacy instruction? Very applicable to the teaching field. Of course, very enriching indeed. You learn best practices today of explicit teaching and multifaceted instruction with high quality materials. That is our resource facilitator, Madam Maria Angelita Perpetua G. Suelto, an education program supervisor of the division of Panabo City. There are a lot of interesting speakers this afternoon. Actually, we have the remaining two. Once again, do not forget to post your comments, suggestions. You have your questions to the Padlet link here flashed on the screen. Do not forget because this is an avenue for your contribution if in case you have your queries that might be applicable in the future or even today to our struggling readers. Reading is really very important to the latter way of success. And of course, at this time, we have our next invigorating speaker 
on the Breakaway Session 10. On his topic, ladies and gentlemen, our resource facilitator, are you linked? Determining cause and effect relationship by Dr. Raymond S. Aquino, Education Program Supervisor, Division of Davao Occidental. Welcome to CLMD Connect. In support is a comprehensive region-led learning continuity plan LCP. I teach integrating technology academic community, the household, ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is Dep Ed Regional Office 11, delivering quality education across Davao region. Good afternoon, DepEd Region 11, and a pleasant afternoon as well to all of you, my dear colleagues in the department. Happy to be with you virtually today. I am Mr. Raymond S. Aquino, an Education Program Supervisor of the Division of Davao Occidental. Welcome to another exciting online session. We are now on the 10th session. This is entitled, Are You Link? This is about determining cost and effect relationship. This session will lead us to understand how to explicitly teach our learners how to read texts that express cost and effect ideas. Today, our resource person for this session is Mr. Kevin Neal S. Dilo, an English course subject teacher of the Eugenio Lopez Jr. Center for Media Arts, Senior High School, Schools Division of Quezon City. But before we start, let us take note of the following session objective. So here are the session objectives. It is expected that at the end of the lesson, the participants will be able to first review the fundamental concepts of cost and effect text structure. Second, point out reasons for teaching cost and effect. Third, analyze the demo lesson showing the explicit teaching of cost and effect. And finally, use different literacy strategies in close reading cost and effect texts. So those are the objectives of this session. I hope we will be able to achieve all those as we journey together in this very engaging session. The question, why teach the cause and effect relationship of ideas in the text? For number one reason, making meaning is increased. Mayor and Ray of 2011, in a comprehensive review of research on text structure instruction, had consistently pointed out how readers' meaning making is increased by the use of text structure to understand how the important ideas of a text are interrelated. For number two, which is other reading skills are developed, it is a fact that understanding the concept of causality is contributory to honing other learners' fundamental reading skills, such as making inferences, predicting outcomes, and drawing conclusions. For number three reason, which is persuasion, Although the cause and effect relationship of ideas are both applicable and apparent in literary or in fiction and in an informational or in nonfiction text, this text structure is majorly relevant in allowing the learners to read and write informational texts, particularly persuasive texts. The interconnectedness or the link of ideas are used as claim, evidence, 
and reasoning for persuasion. Lastly, for number four reason, which is correlation studies, it is believed that grasping of concept of causality is also a good foundation for the learners to be able to conduct correlation studies or researches. So these are the essential reasons why these cause and effect text structure to our learners. In the curriculum, this cause and effect text structure is taught from key stage one to four, meaning from K to three stage to grades 11 to 12 stage. However, in the math, this particular competency is subsumed to other related competencies in all the stages. At this point in time, let's have an activity. What you're going to do is to simply complete the unfinished sentence in two minutes. You can share your answer through the StreamYard Live. So our sentence goes like this. We resort to online learning because. So you're going to finish that unfinished sentence. Apparently, each one of you have specific reason why we resort to online learning. What does that reason express? Yes, it is the cause. The reason is the cause, and it answers the question, why did it happen? For example, why did it happen that we resort to online learning? The answer? maybe because of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our reason, which is the cause. Now, whatever your reason is, the result is your purpose. What does the result represent? Yes, it is the effect. The result is the effect, and it answers the question, what happened? For example, what happened to the teachers and the learners when there is COVID-19 pandemic? The answer, we resort to online learning. This is the result, which is the effect. In everything that happens around us, we can observe the cause and effect relationship of actions and events. Actions and events are apparently connected or linked with one another. There are texts which express cause and effect. We have 10 here, and the cause and effect is number 8 there. The cause and effect text is just one of the text structures. A cause and effect text basically expresses the cause which tells the reason and the effect which conveys the result. Again, a cause and effect text basically expresses the cause which tells the reason and the effect which conveys the result. Now, how to teach cause and effect? Determining the cause and effect ideas in the text can be taught through explicit teaching. Again, through explicit teaching. This approach is parallel with the gradual release of responsibility instructional model of Fisher and Prey of 2008, which is fundamentally grounded on Vygotsky's scaffolding theory. Now, the gradual release of responsibility in explicit teaching follows the three phases, the I do phase, the we do phase, and the you do phase. In the I do phase, the explicit or the direct instructions are the introduction and the modeling part of the teaching by the teacher. In the we do phase, 
the explicit or the direct instruction is the guided practice by the learners with the teacher. In the UDU phase, the explicit or direct instructions are independent practice and application by the learners now without the teacher. The activity one, our reason, which we did a while back, can be used as an activity to carry out the introduction phase of the explicit teaching of cause and effect. For there, we can already introduce examples of a cause and an effect. What was again our sample sentence? Yes, we resort to online learning because of the COVID-19. The statement because of the COVID-19 pandemic is our reason, and this is the cause. While the statement we resort to online learning is our result, which is the effect. So that example will serve as an introduction to the phase or the introduction phase of the explicit teaching. To grasp how to facilitate the modeling and the guided practice phases, let us watch the video featuring the relevant part of the demonstration lesson of Mr. Kevin Neal Dilo a chief trainer during the National Training and Literacy Instruction held last November 2019. And to view persistently, we shall focus on the following questions. So here are the previewing questions. Number one, what is the basic function of signal words in understanding cause and effect text? Number two, what are the different cause and effect patterns? Number three, how is closed reading done in comprehending the cause and effect text? And number four, why are learners asked to create graphic organizers about the cause and effect text that they have read? Take note of the questions and jot down your answer as you watch the video. Again, Take note of the questions and jot down your answers as you watch the video. Later, these questions will be tackled in the discussion. At this point in time, you are going to watch the video of Sir Kevin. Good luck, guys, and happy viewing. After the introduction, we now proceed to the next stage, and this is modeling or teaching. What is this? I do, we do, you do. It's still I do. That's right. And we will be reading the first text. It is entitled, The Filipino Culture, Bayanihan. Bayanihan is a core essence of the Filipino culture. It is helping out one's neighbor as a community and doing a task together. Thus, lessening the workload or making the job easier. It is also called the community spirit. It is best exhibited when people wish to move locations in the rural area. The traditional Filipino house, the Bahay Kubo, can be moved using wooden poles, which are carried from old place to the new one. This requires a group of people to lift and carry the house on their shoulders. Able-bodied men usually participated in such feats while women stood and watched, casually chatting and cheering the men on. Afterwards, there will be a small gathering as a form of celebration and socialization. Now, this text actually contains cause and effect ideas. Where is it? Is it in the entire text? No, in fact, it's just in the second sentence, which reads, It is helping out one's neighbor as a community and doing a task together, thus lessening the workload or making the job easier. It pertaining to 
bayanihan. Okay, where is the cost? That is the cost. Okay, bayanihan. What is the effect of doing bayanihan? All right, so see, this is the result of that action. Okay, and you notice that there is an underlined word there, which is thus. Okay, but before we focus on that, let's look at this one. There is a text. Okay, an entire paragraph, but there is only one cause and effect relationship of ideas there. Why are we doing this? What is the rule of thumb in teaching text structures? That you must not teach it in isolation. I know this, this has been mentioned already, that when you teach this, it should be incorporated in a regular text in a common paragraph. All right? But... Probably an exemption is for the lower levels. Probably for the elementary level, for the key stage one, it is all right to teach it in sentences. But for key stages two, three, and four, it is a must that we put this in discourse, in paragraphs, in essays. All right? So that's rule of thumb in teaching cause and effect. Now, moving on. That underlined word is actually a signal word. Okay? Now, Signal word which introduces the cause or the effect. It's actually introducing the effect. And in terms of location, it is between the cause and the effect. So we can let our learners focus on that feature of signal words. That they are called as such. They are called as signal words because whenever the learners see them, it is a signal that the needed information is nearby, either the cause or the, or the effect. In this case, it's introducing the effect. All right, and then you tell your learners, class, aside from the word thus, there are actually many other signal words, which are the following. These are also in your handouts. This is a table of signal words for cause and effect. So you see, there are specific signal words which will function as the ones which will introduce the cause. On the other hand, there are signal words which will introduce or indicate the effect. And you need to be familiar with this, with all of these, my dear learners. All right? Let's analyze part of speech. In terms of part of speech, most of them are Conjunctions, definitely function words. Are there prepositions? Are there nouns? Okay. There are phrases like, as a consequence, as an effect, as a result, for this reason, etc. Is because of and the others. All right. So they should be familiar with the nature of the words, which function as signal words. That's one. Another is the location. If they are signal words for cause, you will find them before or after the cause. Before the cause, because they are introducing the cause. If they are signal words for effect, you're going to find them before the effect. All right? These are sight words. Okay? And... There can be many possible ways on how they can be familiar with these sight words. But the most effective one is through sheer exposure. Okay? Give them texts. Give them reading materials which contain different signal words. And eventually, consciously and subconscious, subconsciously, they'll be able to be familiar with these sight words. Or if that won't work, you need to explicitly tell them that you need to remember these words. For now, class, I'm giving you a table of signal words, but eventually, like during the exams, like during your um, real-life reading or writing activities, you won't have this table anymore. Now, let's go back to the text. Let's see, how many costs do we see there? As we've pointed out a while ago, there is just one cost. And how many effects? There is also just one 
effects. In this case, this is following one specific text structure of cause and effect. And this is single cause and effect. But then again, my dear learners, there are many other patterns of cause and effect, which are the following. So aside from single cause and effect, we have multiple cause and effect, single cause, multiple effects, multiple causes, single effect, and serial or sequential cause and effect. Okay? Number five is otherwise known as the domino effect. So there are five effects or cause and effect relationships. Now, how do you trickle it down into your students? Probably for key stage one, it's enough that they are aware of just the single cause and effect. But then as we progress through the key stages, you need to unpack to them the different patterns or specific patterns of cause and effect. All right? Again, what we're doing here is knowing the specific text structure pertinent to cause and effect. Now, the very first structure is this, single cause and effect. That is already the given example. And in your handouts, there is another example. Cause, single cause and effect looks like this. And this is another text sample. You may silently read from your handouts. My dear learners, it will be very strategic if you start finding the signal word. Because that will definitely lead you to the cause or the effect. So where is the signal word here? Okay. There you have it. The word because. Because introduces cause or effect. Cause. So the cause in here is that Catherine is Danielle's classmate. And because of that, the effect is? All right. And to make sure or to ascertain that they really grasp the information, you can let them represent this through graphic organizer. And this one is a very appropriate graphic organizer. So you have there the cause. Catherine is Danielle's classmate. The effect is? Wow, Danielle is now very motivated to go to school on a daily basis. The question is, what are the effects of letting or allowing the learners to use graphic organizers? These are the options. A, consequently, it allows the learners to represent ideas and concepts visually. It allows the learners to show the relationships of ideas and concepts. It allows the learners to organize the ideas and concepts as pre-reading and post-reading activities. It allows the learners to organize the ideas and concepts in the pre-writing stage. Again, you may have multiple answers for this checkpoint activity. Letters up. I no need to put the letters up because it's all of the above again. So. All are really the good effects of using or letting our learners use graphic organizers. Okay? First and foremost, it's very appropriate for visual learners. And most of our learners are visual learners. We transcribe the text, so we represent them in other ways, such as this. Okay? It's good for pre-reading and post-reading. The end goal is after reading a text structure that our learners can eventually produce one, that they can write the, the text structure at hand. So as a pre-writing activity, you can let them use graphic organizers as well. And later, you'll be able to see that in our activities. All right. What is the next pattern? In your handouts, it says multiple Multiple cause and effect, okay? And it looks like this. For every cause, there is an effect. Let us read the text. Our barangay has different problems such as improper waste disposal, epidemic diseases, and increasing crime rate. Many people refuse to follow the waste segregation program. Hence, improper waste disposal continues. 
Meanwhile, some epidemic diseases are caused by the fact that people ignore the vaccination, the free vaccination services. In terms of security, there are very few CCTV cameras installed in the streets and alleys. As an effect, it is difficult to monitor and control the occurring criminal acts. Again, my dear learners, what is the best way or the most strategic way to find the causes and effects? Look for the signal words first. And here we have... All right. Hence, caused by, as an effect. All right. Hence. Hence introduces cause or effect. Effect. So the effect there is improper waste disposal caused by okay unfortunately people refusing to follow the waste segregation program all right the next signal word is caused by this is introducing the cause and the cause is people ignoring the readily available vaccination services what is the effect of that okay Lastly, we have as an effect, introducing effect nonetheless. And the effect is, all right, it's really challenging to monitor and control the criminal acts caused by, all right. So see, it's really easy to locate the causes and the effects because of these signal words. All right. So let us represent this again using graphic organizer and it looks like this for multiple cause and effect what is the first cause people not following the waste segregation program resulting to all right next results to mm -hmm. lastly okay Once again, for every cause, there is an effect. All right. The third pattern is single cause resulting to multiple effects. It looks like this. There is just one root cause, but there are multiple effects. Let's read the text. Due to the super typhoon, flash flood occurred. The classes were suspended. Crops are destroyed. Infrastructures are also damaged. The destructive effects of the super typhoon are undeniable. Where is the signal word? Okay, there is just one, due to. It's introducing cause or effect. The cause. And the root cause is the super typhoon. Now, you need to ponder on it. How about the succeeding words or phrases are they still the causes not anymore they are already the effects such as flash flood suspension of classes okay destruction of crops and the damaged infrastructures now for this specific type you can use this graphic organizer the tree graphic organizer now the fourth pattern is multiple causes and single effect this is the exact opposite of the third pattern and it looks like this there may be several reasons but all those reasons just create one effect cardo and aliana quarreled unfortunately they failed to to communicate with one another the friends of aliana spoke ill of cardo Neither of the two wanted to make the first move to apologize. Therefore, they were not able to have reconciliation. Where is the signal word, my dear learners? Okay, now that I find it, it will be very easy for me to look for the cause and effect. It is introducing the effect. And the ultimate effect is that the two characters in here, or the two figures, Cardo and Aliana, did not have any reconciliation. What are the causes of that? Okay, well, one, 
both parties are having much pride. So they did not talk to one another. Even the friends of Aliana seem to be against Cardo. And then finally, they really did not talk to one another. So all of these reasons create this scenario. Them not having any reconciliation. All right? And we can use the fishbone graphic organizer to demonstrate this one. So we start with the different causes in the bones, and then for the head, you have the effects. Okay, what are the causes again? First, no one wanted to apologize, okay, etc., etc., all leading to having no reconciliation. All right. Lastly, we have serial or sequential cause and effect, otherwise known as the domino effect. And it looks like this. Now, this one is tricky. You need to really explain this, especially for the lower learners if you wish to teach this, that it has a root cause, but the succeeding ideas may either function as the cause or the effect depending on your reference. Is it the preceding statement or is it the succeeding statement? And then it will have a final effect in the end, okay? Now, this is the sample text. This is classic. I know you know this. You even know the Filipino version of this, and that is more amusing. But this time, let us read this. Do not lose your pen, because you cannot take down notes without it. Since you failed to take down notes, you may not be able to study. As a consequence, you will fail the examination. For this reason, you will not be able to graduate. You will not have your diploma. Hence, it may be more difficult for you to find a job. And if we continue this narrative, what's the ultimate end? Actually, the ultimate end is the person dies in the end just because he or she lost his or her pen. But let's, bury, let's be very cautious in choosing the text. This one is not highly suggested for classroom instruction. Why? Because this presents a fallacy, right? A slippery slope fallacy. So this is actually a no-no for instruction. But just to show you the flow of ideas, we're using this for this training. All right? So here, what is the root cause? What is the main cause? It is because... Uh, but first, let us find the signal words. Because, since, as a consequence, for this reason, and hence. So we have a handful of signal words. Let's focus on the first one. But here, it will be great to focus on the root cause. The root cause is losing the pen. And that results to not being able to take down notes, which is the cause for the next one, for not being able to study, which causes the failure in the examination. But when you go backwards, it's, it's actually the effect. Okay, When you progress again, Failing the exam may be the reason for non-graduation, for not getting the diploma, and finally, for not finding a job. Okay? The domino effect. Now, of course, the best graphic organizer for that is the chain reaction graphic organizer. The topic is don't lose your pen. And these are the cause and effects creating that series or sequence, okay? Now we're done with the modeling, we proceed to guided practice. Now this is we do. For the we do, you need to tell your learners how to do close reading. Class, today we will be doing close reading. And sir or ma'am, what is close reading? Close reading is actually focusing on the specific details, focusing on the specific information in the text. And then the next question is this, as they find it still vague. 
how do we know that we are focusing on the details or on the specific information? Then you're going to answer by writing some marks, some symbols, some notes in the text that you are reading. Class, we call this text annotation. Okay, text annotation, we've, we, we've relearned this first from what session? From session 8. Okay, hunting for the nitty-gritty. Okay, looking for the significant details. Based on session 8, hunting for the nitty-gritty of the text, why is using text annotation helpful for learners? It is helpful since... Here, there is just one best answer. No, no multiple answers for this checkpoint. What do you think? Is it letter A, B, C, or D? Letters up, please. May we see your answers? All right. The best answer is letter C. Text annotation can definitely be utilized for noting significant details and textual evidences. All right? It looks like this, right? You know it already. You may put different symbols, different markings, such as encircling, underline. And do not forget, you may put marginal notes. These are very important. Now, for this guided practice that we're going to have, I, as the teacher, will be assigning the legend, the different symbols or markings that you'll be using. For the cause that you're going to identify in the text, I'd like you to encircle the cause. Then I'd like you to box the effects. Now, you need to underline the signal words. And eventually, for the different patterns, you need to write these letters on the upper right corner of the paper or the text. For single cause and effect, just write S. Multiple cause and effect, M. Single cause, multiple effects, C, E, S. Multiple causes and single effect, CSE, and serial or sequential, SE. And do not forget, we will also be writing marginal notes. Okay? So we'll do this together, my dear learners. Are you ready? One clap, everybody, if you're ready. The text is entitled, Laughter is the Best Medicine. It is fun to share a good laugh, but did you know that it can actually improve your health? Laughter leads to relaxation of the whole body. A good hearty laugh also leads to the relief of physical tension and stress, leaving your muscles relaxed for up to 45 minutes after. The decrease of stress hormones and the increase of infection-fighting antibodies may be due to laughter. The release of endorphins, the body's natural feel-good chemicals, is caused by laughter as well. Therefore, laughter promotes an overall sense of well-being. Now, my dear learners, let's do it together. The first and the most effective way to find the cause and effect is to focus first on the signal word. So, do it with me. I'm going to underline the first signal word. That is... Leads to. And another leads to. Maybe due to and cost by. Oh, there's another one. We have therefore. Okay, now it's easy for me to find the cause and the effect. Leads to. Let me think about it. Leads to introduces the effect. And the effect here is aha, uh -huh, relaxation of the whole body. So let us all box the relax relaxation of the whole body are you doing it class all right the cause attributed to that is laughter the next is leads to the effect is relief of physical tension and stress now let me see it is caused by good and hearty laugh so i'm going to encircle that maybe due to is it introducing cause or effect Aha, this time it's introducing cause. So I'm going to encircle the word laughter, which comes after that signal word. Now, what is the effect of that? Oh, there you have it. 
it de the decrease of stress hormones and the increase of infection fighting antibodies next cost by it's also introducing costs nonetheless so we have laughter i'm going to encircle that and then the effect is the release of endorphins lastly therefore therefore is also introducing effects and the effect there is there you have it promotes an overall sense of well-being so i'm going to box that and the attributed cause is again laughter what do i notice hmm all the boxed words and phrases do they have commonality yes they have but they are still distinct with one another how about the encircled words or phrases they pertain to one thing and that is just laughter so i'm going to write it as a marginal note okay that all encircled pertains to laughter so please write it also in your copies that's your marginal note this time let me analyze the structure what is the structure hmm by the looks of it there are many words encircled and boxed so it looks like this is multiple cause and effects but is it really multiple cause and effects i'll go back to my marginal notes okay there is just one cause so this is actually single cause and multiple effects so i'm going to write on the upper right corner of my paper c e s okay and that's how you do it that's how you close read a text through text annotation focusing on the cause and effects okay we did it together we're going to have another text okay but before that how about graphic organizer for the graphic organizer what is the best graphic organizer for this single cause multiple effects the best is the tree graphic organizer what will i write in the root okay laughter after all this is the reason for all the mentioned effects and these are the effects now my dear learners look at that did i write the entire phrase the entire sentence no because for graphic organizers it will be strategic to just write the keywords or the key terms so i'm just writing those things all right now i really have a solid understanding of that text and i understand how does the text deliver the cause and effect ideas this time we're going to have another guided practice using another text okay this now is an is telling an issue a social issue a pressing one which is poverty but we are going to do this through rally table okay what is rally table rally table i know you know this this is just a modification of rally robin rally robin is alternately reading the text now rally table is alternately doing an activity in approaching the text all right so let's apply the a and b accountability management so find your shoulder partners your partners should be the person close to you the one sitting beside you find the partner that's your shoulder partner the one who sits beside you assign letter a and assign letter b one of you will be letter a and the other one is letter b all letter a please raise your right hand all letter a's letter a's okay all letter b's one clap again all letter b's all right now we will be doing the task alternately okay first i'm going to read the text poverty has been proven to be one of the most significant challenges in the philippines many filipinos are unable to afford housing because of poverty this puts them in danger of turning to the streets for accommodation some filipinos have little money to buy food 
Consequently, hunger becomes one of the extreme effects of poverty in the country. Even when food supplies are stable, they are most accessible in areas where people have enough income to purchase food. Poverty takes a toll on Filipino families. As a result, children stop schooling and are pushed to work even in harsh conditions. Statistics show that around 3.6 million children from ages 5 to 17 are child laborers in the Philippines. Since poverty is really troublesome, people often result to stealing. People become desperate and practice drastic measures to provide for themselves and their families. Now, all letter A's, I'd like you to find the signal words. All letter A's. Find the signal words. And then show the signal words to your partner, all letter A's. All right, let's see if all letter A's did it, did it well and correctly. First, because of, did you find that? Consequently, as a result, since. Okay. These are all the signal words. Okay, focus on the first signal word. All letter Bs, find the cause and effect in the first, related to the first signal word. Focus on the first signal word, it's because of. All letter Bs, find the cause and effect related to that. Because of is introducing a cause. The cause is poverty. So you should be encircling it. And the effect is, okay, Filipinos not being able to afford housing. Next, all letter A's. I'd like you to find the cause and effect related to the signal word consequently. Just focus on that. All letter A's. Find the cause and effect related to consequently. Just the letter A's. Consequently introduces effect. And the effect is, there you have it. Hunger becomes one of the extreme effects of poverty. Or simply hunger. All right? And the cause of this is? Okay. Some Filipinos have little money. That translates to? Poverty as well, having little money. All right, next, all letter Bs. Focus on the next signal word. As a result, find the cause and effect related to as a result. Go. Okay, introducing the effect. Okay, this is the children need to stop schooling instead they will be child laborers right and this is caused by still poverty okay and it goes on and on until you finish the task okay alternately you let your learners do it and of course the teacher should be there the teacher should every now and then monitor how do you formatively assess this one what do we do for formative assessment We'll look into the accuracy of the markings, of the answers, right? Okay. So, ultimately, it should look like this. Again, you may write that marginal note, all encircled, pertain to one idea, just poverty. Therefore, what is the pattern? It's the same with the first text. Single cause, multiple effects. So, I'm going to write CE. Yes. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kevin Neal Dilo on his demonstration of how to teach cause and effect structure. How do you find the session? Yes, indeed, very engaging as it is very informative.
So again, here we are. A while back, you were given the previewing questions. Now, we will answer them one by one. You may refer to your notes, which you have jotted down while watching the video. For our discussion, number one question, what is the basic function of signal words in understanding cause and effect text? What is the basic function of signal words? What do you think? Yes, the signal words introduce cause and effect. Signal words signal that the needed information are nearby. They are function words, right? And they are conjunctions, so they connect ideas. They connect the cause and effect. Do we have any answers to that question? I guess there is none, so we have to proceed to the next question. Question number two, what are the different cause and effect patterns? While watching the video, we were able to identify five cause and effect patterns, right? So can you enumerate those five cause and effect patterns? Yes, we have that single cause and effect pattern, meaning only one cause and one effect. That's the first one, single cause and effect. Now, if we have single cause and single effect, we also have multiple causes and multiple effects, right? And that is called multiple causes and effects pattern, meaning more than one causes and more than one effects. That's the number two. Now, the number three pattern that is single cause and multiple effects, meaning only one cause, but more than one effect. That's the number three. Now the number four, if you can still remember, that is the complete opposite of the number three pattern. So if the number three pattern is single cause and multiple effects, the number four is multiple causes and single effect, meaning more than one causes, but only one effect. That's the number four. And the number five pattern is the serial or sequential cause and effect. This is a series of cause and effect. So here, the first cause and effect is the cause and effect of the second sequence. And the cause and effect of the second sequence is the cause and effect of the next sequence, and so on and so forth. So that is why it is called serial or sequential cause and effect. So those are the five cause and effect patterns. Now for the next question. How is close reading done in comprehending the cause and effect text? How? This is now close reading, how it is being done in comprehending the cause and effect check. Yes, it is through text annotation. And that is to note significant details as well as textual evidences. And this also includes marginal notes, right? So again, it is through text annotation to note significant details as well as textual evidences. And this includes marginal notes. Okay, for the number four and last question. Why are learners asked to create graphic organizers about the cost and the effect text that they have read? Why graphic organizers? Because 
it allows learners to yes present ideas and concepts visually it was noted a while ago that most of our learners are visual learners so through the graphic graphic organizers they will be able to present their ideas and concepts and through it or through the graphic graphic organizers they can show relationships of ideas and concepts and they can organize the ideas and concepts like in pre reading uh, in post reading activities or in the pre writing activity okay so those are the four questions for our discussion note your individual answers to the aforementioned questions are expected to be sent to the link given to you a while back as basis for you to receive your certificate of participation we will now proceed to the reflection questions relevant to the reading instruction and the teaching and learning process we can ask ourselves the following questions number one why is it important for the learners to be cognizant of the different cost and effect patterns for me as i re reflect on it I believe it is for the learners to understand closely the text that they are reading as to the relationship of ideas and concepts, particularly on the reasons and results. How about you? What's your reflection on that particular question? Okay, just take note of that and you will send it one to the link given to you along with your answers of the discussion question so with the question number two how can signal words be taught effectively i think i need to expose my learners to different texts using signal words and that's the best thing that i could do for my learners for them to be able to understand cost and effect text structure effectively that is exposing them to text which of signal words and number three reflection question what is or why is using graphic organizer an efficient way to understand the text yes i am certain that graphic organizers will aid the learners to present ideas and concepts visually to show relationship of the ideas and concepts and to organize the ideas and concepts that's my reflection about that particular number three reflection question how about you now we will proceed to the last one what makes close reading a necessary skill for a lifelong reader take note skill for a lifelong reader I have faith that by mastering the skill of annotation or footnoting or commenting, learners will be able to note significant details of what they have read and it will make them a functionally literate individual. And that is very necessary and very important no? for us to make our learners functionally literate individual. For them to be a lifelong readers or lifelong learners. Again, take note your individual answers to the to that aforementioned reflection questions are expected to be sent to the link given to you a while back. now we have taken salient points from the demo lesson showing explicit teaching of cause and effect for us to be guided the first one is close reading can be done in the form of text annotation so this is an example of text annotation that is noting significant details and textual evidences and through the text annotation the signal words for cause and effect can be easily identified. We have different signal words to signal the cause statement like because, due, and since. 
We also have signal words to signal the effect statement like so, hence, therefore, thus, as a consequence, and a lot more. Also, through text annotation, the cause and effect ideas from the text can be analyzed. Further, the cause and effect patterns can be determined. Determining the text pattern falls under the text structure strategy, which allows the learners to comprehend the text better. And these are the cause and effect patterns we have identified. Number one, single cause and effect. Number two, multiple causes and effects. Number three, single cause and multiple effects. Number four, multiple causes and single effects. Number five, serial or sequential cause and effect. As a recap of modeling and guided practice stages, notice that the structures of activities done in modeling and guided practice are the same. The learners annotated the text to find the signal words. Eventually, they are able to analyze the cause and effect ideas. Then they were even able to recognize the specific cause and effect patterns. The difference is that in modeling, it is in the I do phase. So the teacher does and shows the activities. While in guided practice, it is in the we do phase. So the teacher gives necessary scaffolding or assistance to the learners while they accomplish the activities. After the modeling and guided practice phases, the learners proceed to the independent practice. You will notice that the tasks to be given in this phase are still pretty much the same with that of the previous phases. The learners will annotate the text to be able to find the signal words. Identifying the signal words will help them analyze the cause and effect ideas. Even the cause and effect patterns will be understood by them. But this time, this is already in the you do phase, which means that the teacher lets the learners do the task on their own. No more scaffolding. To see, that's the essence of the gradual release of responsibility. Now let's proceed to the independent practice. This is close reading to identify cause and effect. However, this is your assignment now. Just remember that the text used in this activity are very easy to comprehend. It is because these texts are intended to be read by lower grade learners. The fundamental rationale of the activity is to simply let you emulate the experience of the learners as they accomplish the independent practice stage of the explicit teaching. Take note that you have to access the text to be used for independent practice through the word file titled Task Sheet Determining Cause and Effect Online Teaching through the link given to you intended for this matter. Now, what you are going to do with your assignment. So here are the independent practice instruction. First, read closely the text. You have two texts to read. First is Facebook addiction, and the second one is plastic pollution. Then what you're going to do, you, have, you are going to annotate the signal words and the words or phrases expressing the cause and the effect. You may use your own marks and symbols. Number three, write the legend for your annotation. And number four, note the cause and effect pattern you have figured out. And the last one, you also have to note of the appropriate graphic organizers to use for the cause and effect ideas. 
Now, since the independent practice is an assignment, you have to work in it on your free time and send it to the link given to you as soon as you are done. Thank you. For the next activity, let us express our ideas by completing the following statements. This is for a summary. Okay, everybody, let us read number one. I need to know the cause and effect relationship of ideas because, state your answer. Number two, finding the signal words is helpful in recognizing the cause and effect because, state your answer. Number three, I should be knowledgeable about the different patterns of cause and effects so that, state your answer. Number four, close reading through text annotation is helpful in analyzing cause and effect in such a way that, complete your answer. And number five, I can apply my learning about cause and effect in, state your answer. In reference to the explicit or direct teaching paradigm, what comes after the independent practice is the application. It is in the final phase, classified as the you do states as well. These are some suggested activities or creative application activities. First, we can use essay writing on topics like relationships, health, environment, social media, education, socio-political issues, and other relevant issues. So that is for essay writing. But we can also use comic strips, but with questions, what happened and why did it happen, so that learners will be able to spot the cause and the effect in the text that we are going to give them. So that's for the comic strip. But we can also use the cause and effect chain, particularly for serial or sequential cause and effect. So that is for cause and effect chain. However, learners also will love making slogan, making posters, or making flyer. That's the traditional version. But we can also use digital version. The what we call infographic. So those are the creative activities for applications suggested. During the national training on literacy instruction last November 2019, there were identified frequently as questions. Most likely, you will also be asking the same questions. So before we wind down, let us might as well pause and answer these questions. Actually, we only have two, but they are very challenging questions to answer. Number one, how will I teach the learners how to determine cause and effect using text lacking or without signal words? But ideally, we should be exposing our learners to cause and effect texts which have signal words, for these are actually good texts. So as much as possible, let our learners read texts filled with signal words. However, in reality, there are several cause and effect texts which lack signal words or have no signal words at all. Hence, if you are using them for reading instruction, you may either modify them by inserting signal words in between the cause and the effect, or you may use it as it is, provided that you reiterate to your learners the core concept of the cause and effect, that is, the cause tells the reason, while the effect speaks of the result. We have sampled text for this matter. This can be considered a poorly written text since the signal words 
are not that clear for learners to spot. And so they will have difficulty to spot cause and effect in the sentence as well. However, if we are going to use the uh, right signal words, the sentence which is snoring may be related to age, weight, and nasal or sinus issues will be like this. Snoring is due to age, weight, and nasal or sinus issues. So the second text will be easier for the learners to read and to spot due to as the signal words. And so they, they will be able to spot also easily the cause and the effect. So that's for frequently asked question number one. For number two, how will I teach the learners how to determine cause and effect using literary text which are structured differently in contrast or contrast to expository text? This is even more challenging to answer, right? Now let your learners have a good grasp of the narrative elements. Ask them to focus on the dialogue of the characters. The characters usually ask why questions. And as other characters respond, the cause and the effect idea can be conveyed. Example. This is the text. The question, why do you follow the word instead of the Camino Real? The answer, father, he told me to follow the word tonight. So through the question and the answer, the learners will be able to find the cause and the effect. So again, focus on the dialogue of the characters. Another, let your learners be familiar with the narrative plot structure. Let them realize how an event may be causing another or resulting to another. For instance, in the plot, the rising action leads to the climax, or the dinoma may be attributed to the preceding events. So again, those are the frequently asked questions. I hope it is made clear to us. So we will not be asking the same questions once again. To wind down this virtual session, you can share either your thoughts, insights, realization, or future instructional plans relative to determining cause and effect via the StreamYard Live. Thank you. Welcome to CLMD, Welcome to Connect. CLMD Connect in support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach integrating technology academic community the household. Ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is DepEd Regional Office 11, delivering quality education across Davao region. That was another significant topic, and I think it is really very timely considering the pandemic that we are experiencing right now. Since our present situation, the cost does not allow us to interact and deliver this training face-to-face, -face, we opted to conduct it online, and this is already the effect. We can also consider this training as another cost which can deliver a probable effect, which is a more efficient and effective literacy instruction both in english and filipino i think that's one example of a sequential cause and effect thank you so much dr raymond aquino education program supervisor of the division of Dava occidental now ladies and gentlemen we understand that our training is going monotone so we will have an ice breaker ladies and gentlemen Joining us this afternoon is our Regional Education Program Supervisor for MAPIC, Madam Jessalyn Beautiful de la Cuesta. Mom Jess? Hi! 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 
Uh, since I am in MAPE and then very obedient sa kay Miss Mar, saka kay Ma'am Janet, saka kay Ma'am Ava, so meron silang pinagawa sa akin. Of course, I will not say no because... Uh, gusto ko rin yun. <laughs> so I would like to request everybody to follow me. Uh, just uh, listen to my instruction. Music, please. Everybody stand. Now guys, alam niyo na kung bakit si Ma'am Jessaline ang ating supervisor for MAPE. Pinalive yeah. yun, pinalive. Yes, thank you so much, Ma'am Jessaline. Thank you I'm so much. I'm in the office. Bye. Bye, Ma'am. Bye. Thank you so much once again, Ma'am Jessaline B. De La Cuesta. She is our beautiful, our energetic, our dynamic regional supervisor for MAPE. Thank you again, ma'am, for accepting the challenge and for accepting our invitation. On the spot po namin kinausap si Ma'am Jessaline and thanks God, pumayag siya. So till next time, Ma'am Jess, we will invite you sa ating mga susunod pa na mga sessions. Thank you again. All right, may I now invite on screen my partner, Ms. Maureen Ava. Hello, Miss Marie. Hello there. Yes, this is it. Of course, we have the knowledge then. Dr. Jessalyn de la Cuesta, of course. That was something that we have to loosen up a bit because, of course, we really are information overloaded. And, of course, a lot of things have just stored within us on this event. And, of course, at this time, Miss Marge, we always believe that upskilling and reskilling our teachers through our resource facilitators topics on their professional achievement and confidence which is basically built on top and active engagement and given pertinent presentations to our participants today indeed what a lively discussions through video lectures and the like Thank you to our resource facilitators, Madam Narmela P. Espedido of the Division of Davao City, our reading coordinator, and Madam Maria Angelita Perpetua G. Suelto, an education program supervisor from the Division of Panabo City. Yes, Ma'am Ava, and we understand that our viewers are now very exhausted. 
So we will entertain now questions and we will invite our facilitators this morning and this afternoon to join us. May I now request our uh, facilitator? We request on screen uh, Dr. Raymond Aquino if he is around. While waiting for them, we would like to invite everybody to send in your questions, your queries to our tablet link. Okay. And a little bit later, we will also um, show the link for the evaluation. Okay, there you go. This is the time that our participants will have the avenue for have, having these innovative solutions and their questions, their concerns and their issues, their suggestions with regard to our today's topic. How about that? And of course, our two presenters, Ms. Espedido and Ms. Suelto, they are of course equipped enough to answer the questions. I guess our questions, suggestions, comments are all ready now, Ms. Marge. Yes, okay, and I think they are ready backstage. Okay, now we have the on screen, Dr. Raymond Aquino and Dr. Maria Perpeva. Hello, ma'am, hello, sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, ma'am. Sir, can you tell us if where are you now? Live from home? What's that? Live from, from where? Mom? You uh, are from, live from where? From division. I'm live from the division of Davao Occidental. I'm actually working from home for this particular uh, webinar, for this particular training. Wow. How about you, ma'am? As well, everyone. I'm also working from home. Okay, we also have on screen Dr. Narmela Escobedo. Hello, ma'am. Welcome. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, Paul. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, so, ma'am, sir. Our viewers have sent their questions, so we would like to ask if you are now ready to answer the questions. Okay, so there is the question, Mon Marge, from Julius Andro Calicdan of the Vision of Davao del Norte. This is the question you can answer, Dr. Aquino, Madam Suelto, and Madam Espedido. Why do you think? This topic still remains some of the least learned topics even before the new normal. And how should we effectively address them in time of the new normal? Any tips, Paul? Okay, yes, can sir. I answer, ma'am? Yes, please can go I ahead, Dr. Her? Aquino. Okay, maybe because uh, this particular competency is really very hard to teach to our learners, particularly in the elementary, not so much in the secondary. And maybe before the, we conducted this upskilling, teachers are not yet exposed to strategies on how to teach cause and effect. For example, in my, my, my topic, no? they are not yet exposed to strategies. Now, that's why we have this upskilling and perhaps reskilling to some of the teachers who are a bit exposed already for them to be able to uh, be adept with the strategies for teaching cause and effect uh, text structure. Now, for this new normal, it would be very challenging for them to deliver this particular competency to the learners in as much as face-to-face uh, -face is almost uh, not possible because our president would not allow us to have that. So probably they have to resort, resort on online modality or uh, distance learning. Uh, if they are going to opt for online modality that is uh, close to face to face so the, they still can uh, deliver this competency this particular topic uh, using the explicit teaching 
no? they can give introduction to the to the lesson they can uh, have modeling they can have guided practice and of course they can still give independent uh, practice the difference is that uh, they cannot right away check the output but if they opt to use the google form now their learners can just upload their uh, their worksheets no for them to to check to assess if their learners are doing well with the lesson now if they opt to have this uh, distance learning through modular now they can have worksheets now the the technique that i can give to the teacher is that you have to use simple and easy text for the learners to be able to uh, learn uh, easily without uh, much uh, guidance from the teacher because the teachers will not be around during the, the learning process. So they can use worksheet uh, using the graphic organizers for the learners to be able to organize their ideas or to to show their ideas visually because most of our learners are visual so by that uh, it won't be possible that uh, this uh, particular competency um, will be will not be included in the list learn competency okay I hope I answered okay. the question of Sir Julius <laughs> Andrew Kalikdan of the Division of Dabo del Norte. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Raymond Akinot. So thank you so much for the suggested tips about these pedagogical structures and scaffolding that they could apply in this station. Thank you, sir. Very comprehensive. Okay. So anybody would like to answer on that question before we can proceed further? Yes. For Entering yeah. tone and mood, entering tone and mood, we, we uh, it will still remain in the as uh, least learned skill unless we have eradicated the non-readers, because one of the difficulties in reading comprehension is of course uh, making it So how can that be? Because many of our learners do not know how to read. They cannot understand what they're reading. Much more with inference, which are sometimes implicit. And they cannot do that without the vocabulary. So that's why we are, this is very timely now, because we are again reminding all of our teachers, Filipino and all the English teachers, to be equipped with a, a appropriate strategies in order to help our learners understand and improve the proficiency in English and in Filipino, and even across subject areas. Thank you so much, Madam Maria Perpetua Angelita G. Suelto, for that answer. So, thank you. And then we can proceed now to our next question from the Division of Davao del Norte. So, this question is for Madam Narmela P. Espedido. What are the effective strategies on how are we going to teach noting significant details for lower graders like in kindergarten, where in fact our way of knowing their understanding is through oral questioning? Okay, thank you for that, Mao. For the strategies for kinder to grade three, there are specifically for the kindergarten, the early grade learners the kinder to three stage are the most vulnerable to inaccessibility to education. They rely heavily on the guidance of adults as caregivers and as facilitators of learning. The delivery of instruction for them should be anchored on the principles of DAP, meaning developmentally appropriate practices. As to the age, the uh, individu individuality, the social culture. Since early grade learners need adult guidance, a combination of face-to-face -face learning delivery, if already safe and allowed, with a teacher and modular learning at home may be, uh, may be employed. For modular learning at home, the guidance of trained para-teachers is required. They must be trained 
on the content and delivery of instruction before implementation to properly and appropriately deliver the instruction. A facilitator's guide shall be made av available to para teachers. Uh, thank you for that question, uh, teacher from Davao del Norte. Um, we can also have recorded storytelling. We can also have uh, audio recorded storytelling, video recorded storytelling, or the use of graphic recorded storytelling, or uh, basically the use of uh, graphic organizers. So the material should also be contextualized, which connects to the con uh, context to higher concepts across content areas. Thank you, much. Okay, thank you so much, Madam Narmela PSPD. Wow, that's a lot for our participants today. The fact that you have given all of your desired knowledge that could be applicable in the school. Okay, so another question from the Division of Davao del Norte. Wow, congratulations to the Division of Davao del Norte for you have actively engaged to our discussions today. So, hello po. Congratulations for the very informative sessions today. How can we apply these things if our pupils are used to mother tongue passages? <laughs> okay, so yes. Dr. Okay. Raymond Aquino. Oh, yes, Madam Suelto. Yes, I believe that the strategies that we have presented, therefore, it's not only for this session, not only for today, but in this five-day training is all applicable in, in all subject areas because it, it doesn't mean that it's only applicable for English. So the text, the text evidence, for example, it can be used also the, the, other, the other strategies that are presented could be applicable to mother tongue. Ang mga bata reach sila sa ilang mga vocabulary. Unlike sa English and sa Filipino, that talagang nahihirapan pa sila. They're groping for words. So, sa, sa, at least sa uh, MPB, yun, so, ilahan na yung kaugalingan ko, no words, so, yung mga pulong, or yung words, lang siya, siguro, para di hapa. It's just a matter of uh, getting the appropriate strategies and the right picture and the right materials. Okay, that's coming from the Education Program Supervisor, Madam Suelto. Is there any additional information? between the two of our presenters today? Uh, okay, ma'am, Maureen. Uh, in my topic, cause and effect text structure, it is uh, taught from key stage one to four, okay? Yes. So, of course, if it is in key stage one, now we might as well use the mother tongue-based uh, approach, or we will be using the the dialect of the learners. However, if we are already in K to, K stage four, no, uh, grade eleven to twelve, of course, uh, that would be uh, a different story. So we might as well use the the right language or the medium of instruction for it. Okay. So as uh, my suggestion is, you really have to fit into the learners or to the level of the learners, uh, the materials that you are going to use. Yun nga, sinabi ni Ma'am Narmela kanina na it should be developmentally appropriate materials. Appropriate. Right? Yes. yes. It, it should be appropriate. Okay? So, I guess it's not a problem, no? We will have to address the, yes. the concerns of our learners because we are learner-centered. Okay? Okay. That's precisely correct. Learner centered Dr. Raymond Aquino. So, is there anything that you'd like to add? We have one last question. This still pertains to Dr. Raymond Aquino of Davo Occidental, since this is all about the cause and effect relationship. So, from Mary Gold Cuestas of Mati City Division, is there any limitation in teaching this cause and effect relationship of ideas in the text? And how can we cope this to enhance reading comprehension skills of our learners? Is there any limitation? Okay, what is suggested here is we are just going to, to give simple text for our learners for them to be able to uh, grasp the, the ideas 
And we are going to use uh, particularly the, the text annotation in close reading because through this one, we can also develop other skills of the learners like noting details, drawing conclusion, making inferences, uh, making judgment, no? and others. So with that, with the use of the, the right text given to the learners, they will be able to hone their skills in reading as well as reading comprehension. Now we are also using uh, different uh, materials for this, different strategies like using the, the uh, graphic organizers that will also aid for the learners to develop their uh, comprehension skill. Actually, this, uh, this competency is in the level of comprehension already, meaning we already have undergone the vocabulary, the uh, fluency, and we are already in the comprehension stage. So, kaya ng kaya ng mga bata yan. With a proper Someone's... approach. Okay? Okay, I thank you so I much. I the question. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Dr. Raymond Aquino. Thank you so much, sir. And of course, you, again, you provided information to our teachers on what they are going to do in the field. This is really very helpful, and this is really a very great opportunity to have with us this afternoon live with your queries, questions, suggestions, and concerns with Dr. Raymond Aquino of Davao Occidental. We have our education program supervisor, Maida Maria Perpetua Angelita G. Suelto of Panabo City Division, and of course, our very own reading coordinator from the division of Davao City, Maida Narmela P. Espedido. This is another round of applause for our presenters this afternoon. Thank you so much. Is there any parting word that you would like to convey to our teachers now, ma'am and sir? Okay, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, I'd like to thank everyone for um, following us here in this uh, stream yard. Uh, I'd like to say these things. To learn to read is to light a fire. Every syllable that is spelled out is a spark. And I'd like to borrow what uh, our ass assistant regional director, Ma'am Ines Asuncion, said last Monday during the opening program. And I quote that reading should not be presented as a duty. It should be offered to our children as a gift. Let us not become wary and doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. According to Mam Liling, our secretary, together let us face with the virtues of the the new normal, with the virtues of the old normal. Uh, courage, faith, adventure, and discovery. So long edukalidad for the good of our God entrusted children. Good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Marmela P. Espedido of Davao City Division. So we move to Dr. Raymond Aquino of Davao Occidental Division. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Maureen. At this point in time, I would just like to express my thanks to our uh, director, the Director Fitalbero, and Assistant uh, Director, Madam Asuncion, uh, our C CLMD Chief, Dr. Janet Biloso, and of course, our boss, Mr. or Dr. Manuel P. Valier, for giving us the opportunity to share what we have, though we are from the very far division. And I would like to congratulate all the teacher participants for another day of success, for having been so engaged with all the discussions today. I can see their responses through live stream, and I like it very much and i like this uh this webinar in general this is very engaging and uh, very lively and very informative i learn also a lot thank you very much thank you so much dr raymond aquino and we're down to the last one our education program supervisor maida maria perpetua angelita g suelto take it away maida Yes, I would like to take this opportunity to thank especially the teachers who helped me in my presentation. 
the the teachers who I'm, who I requested to be, be speakers. Actually, I don't know them. I just uh, I just requested one coordinator from Panama Central District to help me out with the recording. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you also to the to my family for helping me out in the editing to my daughter for especially thank you so much and also I would like to thank the the team iwana walang iwanan yung mga team namin from Dipolog kasi talagang grabe sila maka inspire thank you for inspiring us for believing in us also and of course thank you to the to our director and to all the region personnel to our mom Biloso and to sir Manny vallejo thank you so much for the opportunity also to share ourselves i always believe that teaching is sharing sharing oneself one values and one principle that's why it's a, it has been my mantra to be to bloom wherever you are planted and you'll surely fulfill god's mission for you to all of you to all the teachers happy working and Continue serving the Lord, for this is all for the glory of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Madam Suelto. Thank you to all of you for being the light, the hope, and the inspiration of our teacher participants in the 11 divisions, entire Region 11. Rest assured, they will always be effective because of your presence, guiding them on the right path. Thank you so much. And we may request all of you Thank to you, be... You're welcome, Madam Espedido. At the backstage, thank you so much to the three speakers of today. They are all very good, pertinent information given. Of course, this is very good in applying in our daily lesson. Comes August 24, 2020. Back with my dearest partner, Miss Marjorie Poverilia. Yes, hi, Mom Ava, once again. Thank you so much, Dr. Aquino, Dr. Suelto, and Dr. Espedito. Your live presence and insights are highly appreciated. And we shall see you again soon on the next batch of trainings. Now, Ms. Ava, we have read the comments and feedbacks of our viewers, and we understand that most of our viewers cannot catch up in uploading their answers to the, of the task of our um, speakers. So we shall uh, keep the link open until tomorrow. So please do not worry because you can still upload your answers later. The link is open until tomorrow. Yes, of course, Ms. March. And aside from that, we have to have the evaluation link at this time flash on the screen because there is a daily evaluation that they have to comply because this is the ticket to the certificate of participation on this five-day webinar. So there is the link now. Ladies and gentlemen, our dearest teachers, and of course, our participants in Thai Region 11, do not forget, this is the link for your evaluation. And remember, the link is open until tonight. So no worries if you will experience some traffic. It will still be open until tonight, until 10 p.m. Okay, so at this time, Ms. Ava, we shall choose another division who will give the recapitulation tomorrow. Roleta ng kapalaran! Thank you so much, Mr. Pocholo Hernandez, our IT director yes, at the time. Yes, we shall exclude the divisions of Java Occidental and Igacos because they are already done. So that means... We will choose among the remaining nine schools division offices. Okay, so whenever you're ready, Mom Ava, let's spin the wheel. Okay, there you go. Who is the luckiest division in the entire Region 11? There you go with congratulations, Division of Tagum City for the recapitulation tomorrow in our today's event yes and another reminder whoever will be uh, chosen to give the recap tomorrow please limit your message up to two to three minutes only and the link for the presenter shall be given to you just coordinate with your uh, division coordinator or your cid chief okay i think that's it for today miss ava 
Our time is already 4.04 in the afternoon and we shall end this live stream so that our viewers can still answer their assignments or their task and of course so that they can rest, rest rather. All right. So we deeply hope that our viewers have learned something from today's sessions and we hope you're still up to the challenge that is to serve as an inspiration to our learners, to our children, and to give them quality education. Thank you so much for joining us today. Remember to always wash your hands and stay safe. Thank you so much, Ms. Marge. As we always believe, quality education has always been the top priority of the Department of Education. We all agree that access to education is the fundamental step to accomplishing a bright future. Subsequently, with the future uncertain due to the global health crisis, our agency initiated Philippine education in response to a world intensely changing and the advancement of technologies. Such as this, regional training and literacy instruction, the curriculum and learning management division, Region 11, they give inspiration of knowledge and building helpful strategies to be inculcated to our learners, significantly involving our stakeholders. Respected Regional Director of Region 11, Dr. Evelyn Arfit Alvero, CESO 4. Our Assistant Regional Director, Dr. Maria Ines C. Asuncion, CESO 5. Our Chief of the CLMD, Curriculum and Learning Management Division, Chief John G. Velosa. Education Program Supervisor, Dr. Manuel P. Vallejo, English Learning Area. Dr. Maricel Langahed, our Alternative Learning System Education Program Supervisor. Dr. Jessalyn De La Cuesta. Education Program Supervisor Region 11, the Region 11 Education Program Supervisors and the Division Education Program Supervisors, our dearest teachers, entire Region 11 and our school heads, thank you so much. One Davao Region, Bawat Bata Bumabasa, Sulong Edukalidad, saying to God be the highest glory. We are officially closing our third day session in five, four, Three, two, one. Welcome to CLMD Connect. In support to the Comprehensive Region-Led Learning Continuity Plan LCP. I teach. Integrating technology academic community. The household. Ensuring every learner is safe and protected anytime, anywhere. Anchored on Sulung Edokalidad. This is DepEd Regional Office 11. Delivering quality education across Davao Region.